Home Assistant is back with yet another great release for the month of July. So let's go ahead and look at the various changes. With Home Assistant continuously making improvements to the dashboard, we have yet another update on it. Editing the dashboard has now become more user friendly wherein we can now resize cards using this layout tab. Now you can set horizontal and vertical sizes of the cards. However, this is only available for cards that have visual editor. Like for example, this card that I have, this is all based on YAML code and it is not supported yet. Next, we have some changes on the data tables. If you go inside devices, entities or helper section, we have this gear icon with which we can set the columns of data we want to view. We can either hide it or make certain columns visible to suit your needs. Now this is something that I really liked just to reduce the amount of information that is displayed or the information that I'm interested in. Next we have is a change in using blueprints. Remember there are some times that we want to make a small change in the blueprint but to do so you have to edit the YAML configuration of the blueprint which was pretty tough. Now we can make this change directly from the UI by making use of this take control option. This opens the blueprint as an automation and gives you full control on how you would want to make changes to your automation. Next. As ESP Home is now donated to Open Home Foundation, the makers of ESP Home ready-made devices will now be able to push updates via Home Assistant. That is, devices that are powered by or made for ESP Home can be directly updated from Home Assistant. Next, we already have zones with which we can define locations like for example, office location, home location and you can trigger some automation based on the zone you are in. Previously, the radius of the zone was set to 100 meters and it was not editable. But now with this release, you can edit this in the UI by changing the radius of each of the zone with this handy UI element and move and adjust the radius of the zone. Nice. Next, in this new release, we have the ability to link template sensors to the devices using the UI directly. You can now add a new helper template sensor like for example, here I'm adding an occupancy sensor which is calculated based on another sensor and then I'm assigning it to one of my Zigbee bulbs. You can then view this sensor in the device page. This is usually helpful when we want to link custom sensors to devices. Now let's look at some of the noteworthy changes. It is now possible to update the username of the user which was not possible before. We have this refreshed UI with which we can directly edit the username and the password with this edit icon. Another update worth mentioning is that if you are running fully kiosk browser on a tablet, then you can now access the camera, take screenshot, send notification, text to speech messages and also play a video on the media player. Now I'll be making a video around how you can use Fully Kiosk with Home Assistant. So make sure to hit that subscribe button to see the full video once it is out. Another noteworthy update is that Home Assistant will now raise a repair issue when an automation is broken. So I have some of these broken automations and these are now visible as repair issues. Also we have some new integrations in this release for Aquacell, Ecotrend, Mayali and Noki. Right now, all of this that I have shown is based on the beta release of Home Assistant. So there may be some changes in the final release. Now I keep on making videos around how you can make things smart at home. So make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come. Now, if you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then, I'll see you in my next one.